what is good we're back we got big d in the house we're gonna talk a little afc south buy sell hold we did a little divisional breakdown on the patreon side of things which is how we're going to kind of handle this talk about the team's winning win percentages gambling odds ads offensive line all, all that fun stuff and then on the uh pay on the tube side and the podcast side we're just going to go buy sell hold fantasy players in division so that's what we got today um, and we're going to start at the quarterback position uh and we're going to go buy sell hold in that uh arena there which one is your favorite buy sell and hold out of the quarterback position so we got cj stroud coming in at adp 103 for the fft adp this is super FFT. flex and premium ADP. Yeah. We got T Law coming in at 210 FFD ADP. We got Richardson coming in at 110 and Levis coming in at 806. Big D, what's your favorite buy? What's your favorite sell? What's your favorite hold out of this division? And and this is a division ripe with fantasy talent, it seems. Oh yeah. There's a reason why we started off in the AFC South uh with with some of our our reviews. We're not probably not gonna get to all of them because there's just some that are just so so juicy, and this is one of them. Um so right off the rip drink there you go um, right off the rip we're gonna well, i'm gonna buy I'm, I'm always buying anthony richardson i mean I, I just think that he's you know if he hits he's fantasy goal he's he's winning you weeks i know that stroud's the hot new thing and t law has been kind of disappointing since he's been in the league quote unquote but he's still he's still doing just fine in my mm-hmm. opinion so so for me the buy would be richardson the sell would be stroud and the hold is probably t law i'm gonna leave levis out um since we don't have a category for him i i think it's a very interesting uh pivot that the titans are doing and we could easily in the midseason have have some different views on this but but for me right now richardson's the buy i know he's expensive but to me he's worth it stroud is a sell because he's just so expensive um 103 is 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 up there we'll just say and then tila um i think is is the hold because he's he's I don't know. His whole career so far in the NFL has been a hold. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> what are you thinking? Well, if so, what would what would be like a a buy price for Richardson for you? Like, so right now we got guys like, you know, Caleb and Burrow and Herbert and Murray and Love, all kind of around there. All would those you, except for Murray, I would I would pivot off of, mm-hmm. um, and, and then just and, depending on the the register and the league, right? I, w- I would add either add or subtract, but typically probably um, mm-hmm. to get Richardson. I think that the owner probably held them over the off season. If this isn't a startup, right? So I- I'd be willing to pay a little bit of the squeaky wheel, um, you know, a second or, or throw in an up and coming r- uh, riser, a second on a competing team, right? Or, mm-hmm. or, 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 you know, I probably wouldn't start with a second. Maybe I'd go like um Let's see. I mean, Caleb Williams is an example. He's probably pretty hot enough, or I might be able to get that straight up across the board. Uh, yeah, I don't I think know so. what. Uh, I mean, especially especially as the preseason gyms start to line up, right? Um, if you said Joe Burrow, I think you'd probably be able to get some back on Richardson uh, price wise. I haven't priced out Burrow, but he's he's one of those because of his injury um, situation. It seems like his price fluctuates sometimes. Um, mm-hmm. Give give me one of the other names. Sorry, I, love, love. Is, yeah, is so right love would probably there. be somebody you probably have to add to to get to get to Richardson. You mm-hmm. probably don't need to, but you probably to make the deal happen. You probably would have to. So I would probably start with like love and a third, or or you know something like that. A love and a and a and a backup mix rookie that that's hot hot in the streets right now. I know that the um just saw the injury for the giants running back tyron tracy but you know somebody like that that's that's got a little bit of juice to get 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 you over the hump or if the person you're selling to is a green bay fan then it might you might be able to do that straight up so yeah i was looking through some some trades over here for two quarterbacks for anthony richardson and they're just you know it looks like a lot of them are in anthony richardson's favor where i would probably do that like you know Mm -hmm. obviously we don't know who's making these trades but this is dynasty daddy it's a big database Chris Olave and Rashad White for Anthony Richardson and two quarterback. That seems like sure. Slam dunk. Um, AJ Brown and Swift um, yeah. for Anthony Richardson. Bo Nix, Jamison Williams, and a 25 first. Yeah. That's, that's, just... that's Justin Jefferson <laughs> for Anthony Richardson. And that's a that's a that's a one QB. So that's a single QB. Yeah. 
So there's there were some options. And then going the opposite way, Josh Allen down to Anthony Richardson and getting a first and a second. Yeah, I'd do that. And that's kind of what a, I think that's a good springboard into what you're talking about with Stroud. It's not that you're out on Stroud. It's just no. and I think I, 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 we've talked about this a little bit and I'm, you know, I don't necessarily want to sell Stroud, but if I could get paid a whole lot and move back to a, a you know, even just somebody like a Joe Burrow and get paid mm-hmm. a decent amount, because I think they're when I think of Stroud and the way he played that first season, that's the kind of vibes I got from him. Right. You know? Yep. That's so exactly that's, that's kind of what you're thinking with, with Stroud. It's not that you hate Stroud, right? It's not that I hate Stroud. It's just that he had an electric season and I don't know what the second season is going to look like. Right. I, I could see a regression coming back down a little bit because they were, they were pretty high on a lot of the, the past completions, but you've got a rookie, you have a now rookie into a second year, both on the quarterback position, but also on the offensive coordinator position. You've got teams knowing that the Texans are, are, are who they are now, right? There's, there's no hiding. There, there's no, nobody's, nobody's like, Oh, I wonder what the Texans are going to be like. And they, they, you know, you know who they yeah. are. They've, they gotten better in the draft and that's tougher not to schedule say that, now. Yeah. Tougher schedule. And that's not to say that he's going to struggle in the sense of like, all of a sudden he's QB 28. That's, that's yeah. not, not going to be saying. Sam Howell, <laughs> but for the price of, of one Oh three, I mean, you're talking, like if if I'm if I'm spending 103, he's got to be not necessarily a league winner, but he he's got to be up there for me. And and you had already mentioned Burrow. I know Herbert's hurt again, but you know Herbert was a pivot point for me because he's kind of in that same same realm. Uh, of course, you can get a lot. You should you should have and you still should be able to get a haul for Stroud to Herbert type of scenario there, right? Love I think is also kind of in that same. Um, play style and and point differential, you know, spreading out the ball, spreading out the offense, kind of what Stroud's doing, kind of what the success that Love had last year. You don't know who their number one is. Um, we know that Nico Collins is the number one from the money perspective, but he, but uh, Stroud's still spreading that ball around, right? So so going down from Stroud to Love would be another move that I wouldn't mind personally doing, but I know a lot of people don't like that because of how hot Stroud is. And that's definitely why he's the the sell point. And then as you were going through the Richardson deal, that's what I'm seeing in the streets, right? That's what I'm seeing down in the alley uh, is, is some of those deals going through that. I'm just like, what, you know, I would have paid that. I would have paid more for Richardson. So that definitely alludes to him as a buy for me. Yeah. Caleb to Anthony Richardson and Hollywood, which obviously Hollywood's hurt. Hollywood for Herbert straight up. These are two QBs. These are real leagues that are going on. So don't, prosecute me for saying it's crazy yeah. uh, but here's cj stroud going down to richardson and getting a first you know uh-huh. who's the crazy one you're yelling at your screen right now uh-huh. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> right <laughs> right uh, so there's some options there but i i generally agree with you and i would have not said i would have said you know maybe i'm not buying richardson because i thought it would be expensive but i would be if if there's some of the stuff that uh, that's out there if i could test that market and see if i could be buying on richardson maybe you know people are out on trey benson after a few carries in the second quarter of a cardinals game those people were already out so the people who are maybe selling those shares got scared from two you know one two four passes from anthony richardson in the first playoff game where it was you know a little rusty little hit or miss a couple of good ones a couple of bad ones yeah. You're going to have to live with some of that because that's going to be essentially his rookie year. But it's this is about fantasy points and how quickly he can do that. And if he can stay healthy, you know, I, I think between him and Taylor and Pittman, you know, and the good offensive line, they can be putting up some some good points here. So, yeah, there's I, think a that's the key. I, I think that's the key, right? Is with Richardson is that offensive line, too. It's mm-hmm. not. It's not like the Justin Fields experiment where I still was buying Fields because he was he's a league winner when he when he gets his legs moving and stuff. But but Richardson, I think, can read defenses a little bit better. I know he's not an expert. He's he's not Stroud. He's not Love. Um, these young dudes. He's not going to be able to read the defense right out the gate like those guys are. Um, he's going to need some coaching. But the, that was the pivot point, right? That's the other side of it. Is the coaching is there? I'm I'm a big believer in the coaching staff there for the coaches to to help maximize Richardson's strengths and minimize his weaknesses. So I, I just think that all around the player himself with the ceiling, the, the, the situation that he's in, you know, having the big gun there uh, at running back and, and having a, just a strong, solid top five off, off is it top five offensive line for the Colts? I, I can't recall. I, I feel um, like it, I think we were at, they were at like six, maybe six. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. My bad. Um, but you know, top 10 offensive line in the league, it just, it just, to me, it's just a screaming buy because I don't care who they are. 
I mean, Zach Wilson, if you give him five seconds to throw in the pocket, he's going to find someone open, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. He's no longer a quarterback because you don't have five seconds in the NFL. But my point is, is that Anthony Richardson still a quarterback. He's still a decent yeah, well, he, the, he can throw the ball the a lot better than too. I can, right? right. Yeah, exactly. The, the tools are there. You need to yeah. refine some things, but the mm-hmm. the processing, like we talked about in that in the Patreon episode, I think the processing there and what really sells it for me is I like Shane Steichen. He's got a good quarterback record yep. with Herbert and Hertz having their best years under him, essentially. Yeah. And Anthony Richardson didn't look out of place as in his rookie year. Unfortunately, got hurt. You know, they're going to be moving forward and I, I like where they're building and what they're going. So at the yeah. price in them streets, like you said, I think I'd be buying Richardson. I'm OK with saying sell Stroud a little bit there. I'm, uh, you know, it makes the most sense. Not that, again, that I hate Stroud and I want to sell him. But if I can back up a little bit because we're seeing him at the 103 right now and pick up a first or, you know, first and a second or a really good player on top of that, I'm mm-hmm. cool with that. And I think holding T-Law and Levis is what you got to do right now, right? You could say sell Levis just in case the bottom falls out. Hey guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free discord channel or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, and also our 2024 rookie draft kit complete with rookie rankings, ADP and player pages all for your pleasure. I'm very intrigued by Levis. I got to watch that Titan. Titans is going to be eyes glued to week one. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably for four weeks, I'm going to be all over the Titans trying to see what's going on there. But yeah. T-Law, you got to hold too because I hopefully think... Hopefully we'll... Oh, sorry. Hopefully we'll remember... We'll, hopefully we'll remember them. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, had, I had to get it in. Sorry. My right. right. That, T-Law, that, I think the landing gear will come down and I think yeah. it'll settle in a little bit. And um, and then if you want to sell, you can sell. I think we'll, sure. we'll catch a little rebound here with with people you know some people are just going to be out because he got the label of generation yeah and he's not that but i think he's a good competent nfl quarterback yes is he going to make some mistakes and hold the ball too long and make the wrong read here and there Mm -hmm. maybe and maybe he's not the elite processor and maybe that's what will hold him down a little bit but he's put the jaguars in a really good position where they haven't been in pretty much anybody's lifetime who's anywhere around Mm -hmm. my age which is i just turned 20 37 um, oh, yeah. You know, Mark Brunel in a year with uh, Blake Bordelais. So, you know, other than that, and and he's they had him right there where they they ripped off a bunch of losses at the end of the season. Trevor got banged up. That offensive line wasn't very good. They lost Christian Kirk. I think setting up obviously losing a player like Calvin Ridley hurts, but setting up with Gabe Davis and Brian Thomas, I think sets this offense up a little bit differently to attack the way they were trying to attack last year. And if Kirk and Ingram stay healthy, E.T., uh, was outstanding last year and I think could yeah. have a better year. This line is upgraded a little bit with in a couple of spots and then they brought a lot of guys back. So T laws and Levis is the hold uh, there for me. So, yeah. Plus, and I mean, just real quick on, I, I, I know we got to move on, but, but just real quick, I mean, Trevor Lawrence is 24 years old folks. Like, um, <laughs> you know, I mean, he's still young, like he's still young, especially at the quarterback position. Like if he goes the path of Jared Goff, I think Goff, when he, you know, in his third years as the Rams was kind of getting a lot of the same grief. And now I, I wouldn't say Goff is a top quarterback. And obviously T-Law had a lot higher expectations of that. But I think if if we give Goff the same runway as we give T-Law, by the time that T-Law is around the same NFL years as Goff, I think he's going to be a better quarterback. So so that's that's definitely why he's a hold for me. He's 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 still got it there. He's still got the tools. Yeah. And again, he's only 24. So um, let, let's see. Let's see what happens as he continues to progress. Yeah, I, I, I agree here. So uh, let's move on to the running backs in the AFC West here. And let's maybe maybe we'll exclude Pollard and Spears and we'll kind of do them on their own since we don't. It's a one two punch there. Mix yeah. and ETN Taylor buy sell hold um, for for you here. Big D. Yeah, these are close because I feel like JT still not getting the respect, you know, mm-hmm. that that I, I feel like me personally that I feel like he should get. We just laid out the reasons why you got a running quarterback with Richardson, but you also got a running quarterback that they're probably not going to let run as much as, you know, maybe people think because of the injury side of things. You've got an offensive line that's solid. So for me, JT, he's still a buy. You know, maybe you can pull up some trades and, and talk me out of it. But for for 309, for what, what I'm getting with JT, I still think he can – I don't know if he could be RB1 overall because of some of that 
question marks at the goal line and what what's going to happen. But I think he could be definitely in that RB2 to RB3 range pretty relatively easy without having an, uh, uh, an immaculate season um, just because of the work volume and what he's going to get. So he's a buy. ETN's kind of probably a sell at this point for me, and Mixon is probably a hold. What are your thoughts? Uh, so I got buy Taylor, JT, I got sell ETN, ETN and, and then a hold on Mixon. I don't really want to say the same, but I actually, you know, I I think, I think I'm holding Taylor. I'm, I'm buying ET and I'm selling Mixon. You know, I don't know what I can get for Mixon. And this is all always about cost, but theoretically, you know, ET seems like the same way Taylor's price is still good. I think ET's price is still good. We just talked about the, the line, maybe being a little bit, have some more continuity there. I think Cam Robinson is maybe already injured there for them, which is a bummer. They spent some capital on that offensive line last year. They brought in a new center Uh, this year. uh, Mitch Morse, I believe, is who they brought in. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, they've they've shuffled some things around. And I think they're going to have a little bit of offensive line that's a little better. And I I just ETN was was really, really good last year. And, you know, I don't think it gets the credit maybe he deserves. And, And Tank has been getting a little bit of resurgence here. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, just today I was reading now that you know he dropped the ball here and there and it bounced off into the defender's hands. And I, I just still think this is going to be a big time ETN show. He's coming in at four seven almost around later than Taylor. They stopped running the ball a little bit at the back half of the season. That was something that we talked about in our yeah. episode on the on the Patreon there. That like they went down, you know, three less running plays per game at the end of the season where ET was really on fire in the beginning of the season, and then they stopped, you know, giving it to him as much throughout the season, but he still caught a bunch of balls last year. I'd go buy ET, hold Taylor, sell Mixon. Cause I think I, not, and I, and I don't, I, I like all these guys. I like all these running backs in this division. Mm-hmm. And I, and I do like Pollard and Spears, which we'll hop on to a minute, but it seems like maybe you could still squeeze some value out of Joe Mixon. What do you think? A second, 20, 25 second. Would that get it done for you? Yeah. And you know, like I said, we're, we're doing buy, sell, hold on the division. So we got to do something with them. And I'm, I, I'm kind of buying probably all these guys to be honest sure. with you. I feel like I'm buying Mixon for a second, right? Like, Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. You know, obviously it all depends on where you're at right now, but sure. Yeah. 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 It depends on what that second might look like and in, in that, but I think just trying to put some value to this, like you're not going to sell Mixon for I mean, here's, what he here's was. Joe, with here's Joe Mixon and Mike Evans in the trade two quarterback for a first and a third. That's Mike wild. Evans, Joe Mixon for a first and a third. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Here's uh, Joe Mixon for JJ McC- Joe Mixon and Jahan Dotson for JJ McCarthy and a two quarterback. Joe Mixon mm-hmm. for a 26 first and Alexander Madison, which Madison, whatever, but still getting yeah. a first. So pretty good. I think last time we talked about Mixon in a buy sell hold, I thought he had a little extra juice than, and it's, you know, Rashad White and a second for Mixon. Cook. Uh, oh, I would Cook do that. For Mixon I would do first. That. I'm the Rashad White in the second side on that one. Yeah, this is Rashad White straight up for Joe Mixon. Um, here's a 25 second for Mixon. Here's a 25 second and third for Mixon. So maybe a little bit more juice than you thought out of out of some Mixon here. Jalen Warren and a yeah. third. After listening to that, maybe maybe he is a sell for me. Um, you know, especially if I'm a mid team and I don't know if I'm I'm really a good contender and and I've got a. Maybe I've got a juggernaut in front of me that's probably gonna, you know, run the run the gauntlet. Maybe maybe he is a pivot off of uh, two and two so. quarterback half PPR Joe Mixon for Najee and two nine. You know, I don't mind that at all either. Don't mind that, huh? Yeah, two two nines. So that must have been twenty twenty four. Yeah, that's so two the, quarterback if, in the in the middle middle to end of the second round and in, in the twenty twenty four draft. Yeah, let's let's call it Leggett there, right? You'll say yeah. you got Leggett or let's maybe look at it. Pick up Jalen Wright there. Oh, I'm gonna do to. a dad joke for each each one. So let's <laughs> look at it for that one. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Some juice on mixing, so I like it there. And then let's let's, yeah. let's hop over to Pollard Spears. 10-3, sure. 909. 10-3 for Pollard, 909 for Spears. So you know FFB ADP, yeah. Spears a little younger. Pollard, you know, letting some people down maybe last year for having his his opportunity, but maybe wasn't completely healthy, yeah. um, and didn't get right and thought so thought he started looking a little better down the stretch. And I thought he looked really explosive and and pretty good in his uh, you know debut with the Titans against the Niners this last week. Now the Niners weren't really playing any first stringers, and I think this is how this backfield's going to go, right? And just kind of how you saw that it looked like Pollard was was you know 
busting things off a little better. Things were going for him. So it seemed like in that phase that Pollard would probably run with it a little bit. You'd mix in Spears and see what happens. But they've kind of talked about that, that they're going to play the hot hand. They have packages for both guys. They're going to get them both on the field at the same time. Um, and they have plays that they're going to run for both guys. But when one guy starts getting hot, he's probably going to get a little bit more run for him, right? And w- which is, you know, how you would almost need to play that situation because I think they're both interesting and they're both, you know, very usable in the pass game. So, you know, you'd be doing a disservice. And, and what I did see from Levis in that game um, was him coming off of those deep receivers and checking it down to those guys, which I feel like wasn't something that you saw from Levis last year he was really locked in and trying to attack deep which he which he's he's gonna do and that's what this offense is gonna do but if you're gonna be running some some deep stuff down there you can drop those eyes back down buy some time and check it down to either one of those two guys and they can make you know mayhem happen for you so yeah so that was good growth by them and a good showing for pollard and spear so what are your thoughts here yeah i mean i i definitely am on the spear side here but i think pollard did get Pollard did get a little bit more money than I was expecting him to get from the Titans. And so mm-hmm. if you look, if you're following the money, which is oftentimes a pretty good strategy, I think Pollard is probably, probably keen to, to, to have the opportunity out of the gate. So that tells me that, but because of my feelings on Spears, it's really hard for me not to have a, a biased opinion. Right. Um, mm-hmm. I, I feel like I would buy Spears just because, you know, he's just a dude that I'm, I'm in love with and I probably yeah. sell Pollard cause he's a dude that I've never really been in love with even when he was backing up seek. So, um, I, I have more faith that I would get more value out of Spears in the long run uh, than Pollard. So that that would probably be my take. But again, I, they came, they went out and got Pollard for a reason. There's a new offense in town. There's a new coaching staff in town. So the, the smart play is probably to go with Pollard and and sell Spears. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not a terrible way to go about it. Um, just today, there was a Sam Darnold two quarterback trade. For Tony Pollard, straight up, that's on the Dynasty Daddy site. That's a bunch of sleeper trades, right? And that's today is the date on that. So obviously, yeah. JJ McCarthy got hurt. Maybe that's the McCarthy owner. Sure. Um, so I don't hate that. Don't Pollard and a first for A Chan. That's, that's, you know, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Pollard for Aaron Rodgers and two quarterback. Uh, yeah, that's a solid deal. Sure. Um, Montgomery so, for Pollard. Mm, probably still going with Monty. <laughs> Oh yeah, you know, we'll go on Monty, pretty hot you and heavy. Know, we'll Monty, now, you, may, you know, um, that was today. So, so Pollard value is about a second, then, right? Like Pollard. Here's Pollard for a two twelve. Here's another trade for Tony Pollard and David Montgomery. So that's popular. Same, you know, one for yeah. one. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, uh, for me, they're both kind of buys. If you're, you know, I'm, I'm interested in buying either one that I can get my hands on. But if you know, if, if, like you said, it's probably smarter to to do what you said there. Um, but I love Spears. I got a lot of Spears. It was mm-hmm. a real bummer when when Pollard went there. Um, we'll see how they use him. And some days, best ball, it's going to be a nice ownership. I think maybe it might be a little bit of a headache week to week. But if they can, if they if you can if they can figure out how to both get you ten points with being their pass catcher, and when one of them scores, they you know they got a decent ceiling. Yeah, I mean, that could be kind of what you're seeing here. So I don't hate really having either one of them. But it's really hard for me to not buy Spears and sell Pollard there, so I'm going to just go with that. Okay. Um, all right, let's move over to the wide receiver sides of things. And this is, you know, obviously the Texans super deep at wide receiver. Super deep, yeah. Colts have a, Colts have a good, strong number one, and Downs is, is injured right now, but he was, with all reports and indications, being good. What you got? He's down. He is down. Yeah, He's down. yeah. there you go. Get AD Mitchell cool. getting some love, and then, you know, Alec Pierce – out there battling they kind of had ad mitchell in the slot a little bit and pierce Mm -hmm. out wide and and in those games kind of mitchell filling in for downs let's roll through this division here let's roll through these wide receivers and um do you let's let's go texans because i think those are the most or let's go let's go nico collins or michael Pittman. which 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 would you rather buy sell hold and i guess you could throw tank dell in there because i know like somebody like big co you know, has yeah, has Tank Dell in there, but I think that's the yeah. easy. Yeah. So let's let's stick with Pittman and Collins because they're one to pick apart in our ADP. Um, yeah, if I had to buy one there. and I had to sell one, ah, oh, yikes! I think I would go Collins. And 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 going back to our quarterback discussion, it's just because I I believe in Stroud's distribution of the ball. He got paid. I think Diggs is only there for a year. 
Pittman's still out, right? Like, I, I think, uh, you know, see how he's going to be used with Richardson, but also see if he's going to be the long term solution because they added a lot of speed to that offense. And I don't, when I think of Pittman, I don't necessarily think of speed, right? So, mm -hmm. so I don't know if maybe eventually they might pivot away um, when it comes to paying big money. So, a lot of big thinking there in my brain. Um, so, probably means it's the wrong way. But, but I think I would lean Nico and probably if I could only do one, I think I'd lean Nico and sell Pittman. What about you? Yeah, I've I've had this comp this this situation in a lot of the mocks we've been doing. Mm -hmm. uh, we're doing some best balls right now through through the Discord, and I've been faced with that decision a little bit here and there. Um, and in redraft, I think I would probably go Pittman just for the year and mm -hmm. just being the guy. But in yeah. Dynasty, we're playing the long game. We got to have some patience. The distribution of the ball, Diggs, does he stay around? I don't know. He's older, but you know, Nico's a year and a half. I think just about younger than, than Pittman. So that's really kind of the biggest tiebreaker for me um, in dynasty is that you just reset the clock. And I think Nico, you know, can be a 17 point per game kind of wide receiver. We've seen it already uh, mm -hmm. when him and Dell Dell are healthy they're they average somewhere around the same amount of points. Um, so I, I think, you know, Stroud is plenty capable of, of supporting two to three assets here. So I would, I would go Nico um, as well. How about where do, where does Tank Dell weigh in with the rest of these? I mean, I think it's he's clearly ahead of everybody else. Is, does does he come into that conversation at all for you with Collins and Pittman, or is it still a small gap there? Because I I don't know how much gap there should be really. Because Tank Dell did did extremely well and put up you know really really good um, splits with Nico Collins when they were all healthy and on the field. Yeah, I mean, for me, I think I think Nico is still still has the ceiling play for me, even though tank is really that kind of ceiling player, best ball player uh, that you would like. I, I feel like if you bring in Dell and give me two, two buys or two holds in a cell, I think Dell is my cell. I, I just, I don't have as much confidence as Bitco does in the long-term aspect of Dell. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I think that, that could be a detriment, uh, but I, I just, and it's not just because of the injury. I just, um, I don't know. I know that the I know that we're changing in the NFL, but uh, he's just he's just so slight of frame that I'm just I, I I get nervous when we're talking about three years from now what what that's going to look like, and I have yeah. more confidence in Collins and Pittman at 27 um, than I do at Nico at 27. Right now, uh, Tank Dell, sorry, Tank Dell right now is 24 years old. Right, so three years he's 27. Mm -hmm. Pittman's 26 right now, so next year he's 27, and and Nico's 25. Um, and and again, there's some month differentials in there, but but for the sake of argument, we've got a 24, a 25, and a 26 year old. You normally would lean youth in dynasty. But I've been trying to tell people for a while, um, just because you're playing dynasty doesn't mean you should look at your team in a in a decade, right? You shouldn't say I'm going to have this dude for 10 years or I'm going to have him for even five years. I mean, I, I, I turn over my raw and, and maybe that's just a play style thing, but I turn over my roster, uh, faster uh, than than I thought I would when I first started playing Dynasty, when I first came in and had those like, oh, I'm going to have this guy for the next six years. No, I probably, <laughs> probably won't, right? Because because things change. My my opinion changes and, and I capitalize on value. And so, so for me, I'm just looking at it in a two-year window. And in a two-year window, I'd rather have Collins and Pittman over Dell. Hmm. All right. I mean, I guess I guess I'm kind of right there. I, I'd I'd kind of package all those guys together, and I, I feel kind of semi indifferent. But I like the Dell and the and the Nico for being a little older, or for being a little younger rather. I'm not as worried about the the frame and and the workload on Dell. And I I know CJ Stroud just loves Tank Dell, so that you know somewhat weighs into my decision a little bit there. But he, he does have to hold up, so we shall see. He loves uh, a lot of players, though. I will say that though. Like yeah, he, he loves, well, he he's, he's been all you know he's been all in multiple times that I've heard him speak about it. So yeah, but you are right. But um, but I think I would buy if we we're talking about just straight buy. I think I would buy Tank Dell at a round later than mm -hmm. Nico or Pittman and and fill in another position there in the fourth round. Yeah. So if we're talking startup draft, I think I would be closer to buying Dell in a startup and then and then put plugging somebody else there in the fourth like, you know, if I if I had a choice to go um well Travis is in the fourth, right? So if I went ET and Tank Dell comparison to Nico and I'd have to look at the 
Um, I mean, you could just say a, Nico and Tank Dell, basically, um, or you know, Nico yeah, and Nico and Tank Dell. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I th- I think the combo there is is better. But if we're looking at a at a vacuum vacuum cost, I'm go I'm gonna go sell. I'm gonna sell Tank Dell. So, yeah. No, I'm 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 pretty much buying all three of those guys too. But for the sake of the argument of the of the, of the show, um, I, I I like all three of those guys, and I like having all three of those guys on my team. Let's take it to the you know, wide receiver one and two of the Jacksonville Jaguars here, and and then we'll talk maybe oh. just who we like as as a little bit of the later wide receivers out of here. And and we have Brian Thomas, who's obviously the rookie. Mm-hmm. Um, who, like I s- said earlier in this conversation, you know, I think I think he fits better for what they wanted to want Calvin Ridley to be. And Calvin Ridley is clearly a better player at this point, right? I mean, I just but mm-hmm. just keeping him on the outside and and getting him vertical down the field, I feel like Brian Thomas is going to come in and be really good at that role and having some bigger guys on the outside like Thomas and Gabe and Gabe Davis. I think for you know running purposes as good block as potentially good blockers there and some bigger guys, I think is really going to meld well with what Jacksonville was trying to do last year. And it's not going to really change because nothing Peterson and, and uh, press are still there. So right. um, obviously there's a round difference right now in our ADP between Brian Thomas and Christian Kirk. And I don't think anybody would, you know, say that, Hey, I want, I, I, for, you know, I want Brian Thomas for Christian Kirk, just straight you up. Know, you, it's a whole round difference there. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. Give me your thoughts on this, on this wide receiver core. For Jacksonville, I I think I want Kirk out of the core because Kirk's my man. He's mm. my man. No, I'm just you're good. Um, I I really like Kirk and I like what he brings to the field. I think BTJ in the seventh is a good value. So we I don't know if we've talked about it. So Brian Thomas 702 FFD ADP. Um, Christian Kirk 808. I shot out Hawaii, and then uh and then we have Gabe Davis at uh going into like the 15th round. I think. Um, I mean. Personally, I, I feel more content with if I, if I'm if I'm lining up a wide receiver three, I think I want Kirk as my wide receiver three over Thomas. Most of my leagues, the way I set up my teams, right? I think I would want Kirk because I want that steadiness. But I right. definitely think BTJ has the higher ceiling. So as a ceiling play, like I was explaining with the quarterbacks uh, <laughs> earlier, and like, well, now you're talking out the other side. No, this is because it's wide receivers. It's a different concept, and it's kind of the way I build my teams. And so Brian Thomas is more of a more of a a gamble, I guess you could say. And so uh, he's probably the better play. He's probably the better hold, I guess you could say. I don't know how much you can get for him. Uh, Kirk is probably, I don't know how much you can get for the wide receivers in general, right? So to call themselves, I don't know what, you know, I'm, I'm not yeah. sure contrasting wise. I don't think you're going to get much. So they're probably all holds for me with the exception of, of Gabe Davis. I, you know, he's kind of a, you know, whatever, whatever you, whatever floats your boat. He's he's a great um, best ball player. In fact, I got to check my best ball drafts and make sure that he's in my queue. Right. But, yeah. but, but as far as uh, value to this discussion, I think I would rather talk about Parker Washington than talk yeah, about yeah. Dave Davis. So, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, just to double back on Kirk and, and Brian, yeah. Thomas, I think, I think Kirk is, is kind of, you know, he's their wide receiver two kind of deal, but I think he's going to be their wide receiver one this year of just catches yeah. and, and yards and, you know, maybe even touchdowns. Yeah. Um, Brian Thomas is going to be splashy and have some good times and some bad times, I think. Um, and I like both, uh, but I like, I'm right with you. I love buying Christian Kirk. I love the value you can get on him. And I love the, how, I, you know, I think you can set it and forget it with him, you know, yeah. week after week. And, and we saw that, you know, week one, we saw a goose egg and then we just saw, you know, a very steady Eddie. And I think things could even, you know, continue to grow uh, with mm-hmm. Zay kind of out of there, you know, another guy who can kind of eat up some of the stuff that Kirk could do. But between Kirk and Ingram, I think those guys are going to just eat. Um, and and Brian Thomas and and Gabe will be kind of holding down the outsides there. So I I, I really like how this sets up for them. Yeah. Uh, but let's let's jump down and um, so the, kind of the rest of these receivers and we'll, we'll talk about guys that we like the the stashes or the late round the really late round guys. But in the mix of of the rest of the receivers in the AFC South. We have AD Mitchell, who's obviously another rookie. That's at 1007. We have Josh yeah. Downs at 1205. We got Calvin Ridley at 1002. Mm-hmm. Nuke at 305. And then you mentioned Gabe Davis at 1510. So we've got a kind of a hodgepodge of old and young, but Nuke, I guess Nuke just at, what's no, that? Nuke at 1308. You said 310. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, 
you know, obviously AD Mitchell, if your build is is going, you know, you can kind of go productive struggle or grab AD Mitchell if your build, if you have like some older guys and you wanted to grab a young guy, I think AD Mitchell is 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 a great, you know, potential upside pick there. Yeah. Um, I don't find myself drafting a ton of AD Mitchell when I do draft. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know that I have any AD Mitchell in any of the rookie drafts that I came came out of have come out of so far. Uh, and and I, I got some late ones. I do like some later rookie drafts. I like some third third week of the preseason rookie drafts myself. Um, so I like to spread them out a little bit. Yeah. Not to say that I wouldn't take A.D. Mitchell. I just hadn't found myself in that position. I've traded around and, and, and don't really have any. So Josh Downs is probably my favorite pick out of all these guys. It's just, it's cheap. The, and then the, obviously the reports were good. Now he's a little banged up. So that stinks. Mm -hmm. um, but and he even he had some really good games last year as a rookie um, and yeah. Reggie Wayne loves him. I think he's just I, I think he's a great route runner. I think he's something that they kind of need on this team. Um, Does Steve Smith love him, though? That <laughs> no, if Steve Smith loves him, then you should fade him because that guy yeah, exactly. is batting that's, about that's zero. That's what I was saying. Point zero. <laughs> um, but he'll tell you about it. Oh, he'll uh, tell you all day about it. Yeah. So um, but yeah, no, Josh Downs is. um is probably one of my favorites. Not that I said that I wouldn't take Nuke. And I do think Calvin Ridley's a pretty good shot at 10 2 to really help your team this year um, get yeah. after it. But, and, and, you know, so I'd say Downs and Ridley are my favorite kind of two out of, out of those kind of later round guys. I find myself, Josh Downs is one that almost ends up on all my teams as far mm -hmm. as startups go. Cause that 12 05, you know, I've seen him late 13s sometimes. And I just, you know, he's somebody who could who, who was getting 10 points, you know, in, in some games last year and, and 12 and 14, you know, just yeah, I think he's for that offense and Michael Pittman just commanding what he does. I think for Josh down, like they don't really have that tight end position that's sticking out. And obviously he's not built like a tight end, but he can kind of just roam and manage that middle of the field, the shorter to intermediate stuff. And I know Pittman does a lot of that, but yeah, he just feels like a good change up for them. Um, and a necessary piece, whereas Pierce can kind of, you know, seems like he could be a vertical guy for him. And A.D. Mitchell's obviously, you know, got some special talent and some and some good analytical um, like from the speed and route running prowess. Just we, we're not sure about the the work ethic and attitude kind of stuff, but I like the surrounding. So I do like A.D., but Josh Downs seems like like he could be excellent. So I'll let you have a minute over here and then we'll take it over, do our late round stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of echo a lot of your sentiment. I mean, I, I'm definitely interested in um, A.D. Mitchell because I don't necessarily think they have that play style that he can bring, um, why they probably drafted him. And not that I'm smarter than everybody, but I am. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, not that I'm smarter than everybody, but I just kind of feel like he has, you know, they drafted him with a purpose. We just got done talking about this coaching staff, and I, I'm kind of interested and excited to see. And in the 10th round, um, that's, you know, that's pretty good value, but I mean, at 12th round, now you're, you now you're two, you know, 24 players later with Josh Downs. I mean, the value wise is just, just off the table. If I, if I'm, if we're already in an established league though, um, I, I'm assuming price wise, Mitchell's still probably pretty expensive, especially now that downs has had the injury. So I'm still, I'm probably out there trying to buy some downs. Uh, cause I think it was mm -hmm. a high ankle sprain, right. Uh, for downs, yeah. if, I, if I recall, uh, which is not. Not great. Uh, it was it ain't nothing to play with. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, ankle sprain. Um, it's it's not not great news. But I do believe, like just like you said, I I think there's some value there. You know, I don't want to say dumpster diving because that's not not what I mean when I'm talking about downs. But I I think there's some definite value there where you might be able to get them here in a couple weeks for a third or or you know and a third and a fourth or something. And I I'd be all about that. Um, I think a good discussion point would be Ad Mitchell or Calvin Ridley. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Ridley going into what is he? Twenty nine, uh, twenty nine. Yeah, he's twenty nine. Uh, he's the uh, Jamar Chase of the the Titans, right? <laughs> That's the way that they're <laughs> they're going to set up this offense. He, he's supposed to be the Jamar Chase of, of, of the Titans, and and when you look at the competition around him, I mean, I don't know, man. I'm I'm thinking like five or six years ago, like nuke tyler boyd calvin redley holy sh here we go buddy let's buckle up but yeah but yeah for a, but for a fast-paced offense or at least the way that they're kind of seems like they were trying to stage this to be in a, in a deep threat offense i don't know if they necessarily have the personnel yet where they want to be so uh, i'm skeptical on on ridley's overall value um but at, at the 10th round still man i i 
uh, is there not to put you on the spot? Could you, could you pull up a couple trades with Ridley recently? Cause I feel like he yeah. might be a buy for me. Um, uh, the 10th, I, I know it's a gamble, but man, the 10th is just so that's, uh, that's so far down that uh, I feel like he he could be in that buy buy spectrum. For I, I think he could really be, uh, you know, he could essentially be a, a league winner for you. So I think you're I think you're yeah. right on there, and I, I I do like him. So let's see some uh, Calvin Ridley, Cortland Sutton in a two, Calvin Ridley a twenty six one, Calvin Ridley for Amari Cooper. Yeah, Calvin I mean, Ridley. I think a twenty six one, I would be all over it. I think I'd even go if I'm a contender on a, with a twenty five one. If I could do a pick swap, right? Do Calvin Ridley send my twenty five one and a, and and get something back, maybe a second from the. I don't know if that's maybe that's not enough, I, but that would be my starting offer. Would be Calvin Ridley and my and then sending uh, Calvin Ridley and their second for my first next year might be mm-hmm. something that I'd be interested on. If I'm a contender and I feel like I'm a flex play away. I'm not buying Calvin Ridley to be my number one wide receiver. That's not what I'm saying. I'm I'm saying I'm buying him to win a championship, right? So to be my my number one flex, I think I would be willing to pay that first price. I'd even probably go Calvin Ridley. I mean, sorry, I'd, I'd even send my first for Calvin Ridley. And I don't know, maybe I'd have to think about it. But be, I might send it for Calvin Ridley and and also getting that third back or something something to that effect. But I don't think I'd send it straight up. But I but I do think I could. I could see myself being a little bit aggressive, just looking at where these targets are going to go and what they're trying to stage this offense for. I think as long as Ridley's healthy, he's going to, he's going to demand, you know, you know, remember that snake game where you start to eat those things. Like, I feel like he's going to, as the season goes along and these old veterans get tired, I feel like his snake uh, concept is going to get bigger and bigger. Um, Right. So I could, could and you already have Nuke missing four to six weeks here of of, of a big chunk of camp and, yeah. Um, and they're, they're loving Calvin Ridley. And, he, and I mean, he looked good last year. I mean, he, he'll drop some balls from time to time, but I mean, he's quick, fast. He's a good route runner. He's in and out of stuff. He can get vertical. Um, he can do a lot of different things. Here's a, here's two twos for, for Calvin. I do. that. Um, yeah. You know. Yeah. So he's a buy. So there there's, we go. There's some, there's some good ones. I mean, there's some, there's some bad digs for digs for Ridley, Calvin Ridley for a two. So my first is too high. Then is what what you're what you're saying. Well, there's there's some for first. Um, yeah, Debo for Calvin Ridley a two and a four. Mm. Calvin Ridley and then you get or sorry Debo and then you get Calvin Ridley a two and a four. Is that yeah. Right? Yep. Oh yeah. I wouldn't. I think I would be interested in that. Calvin Ridley for Jerome Ford. That's a fucking great one. Calvin Ridley for two two. I think if mm-hmm. I'm a competitor for sure. Yep. Um, Curtis Samuel and a twenty-five one for Calvin Ridley. Um, so there's, you know, there's some interesting options out here. There's James Cook for Ridley and Conklin, and that's one point five premium. Mm. That might be a hair rich for my blood. That's a little. Yeah. I, I love Conklin. Like he's one of my favorite fucking late round snatch ups. There. He's a fun stab. Yep. Yeah. So, all right. Well, let's uh, let's keep it moving here. Uh, do you want to talk tight ends at all, or you want to skip those and go right to? Um, some some of the ancillary older pieces or not older but uh more um kind of late round stash stab kind of pieces here i mean i think outside of evan ingram that's what we are talking late round stashes if we're talking tight ends right because i think that dalton schultz is what 11th round and chig right now is 16th round so so i mean i guess we could have a separate conversation with evan ingram um you know, going through the re restack of what they've done in Jacksonville, I kind of feel like, and, and um, on top of the fact that Evan Ingram had a career um, mm-hmm. career year, <laughs> I, I, I kind of feel like there could be some regression there. So I don't know if I'd be out going all balls in for, for, for Evan Ingram, but, uh, but, but I think the, the late, la- the, the late round chig really has me interested The just just going through this depth chart you know i'm looking like mm-hmm. man where where are these explosive pass catchers like for the way that i feel like they're trying to you know chig has me interested and even um uh, uh and going back to the running backs not to back us up but the pollard and spears in this offense now i'm i'm i might be a little bit more bullish on this so so but I, but i think chig is probably the probably the number one person number one target that I've circled here as far as uh 
you know, Calvin Ridley kind of came to mind. We just had that discussion. You guys mm-hmm. saw my hamster wheel spinning while we were talking. <laughs> um, Chig is also just looking at the the value here. I just I feel like he's a screaming buy and tight end premium right now. Yeah, I mean, I, I like the 1603 jig, and I know people are probably out because it hasn't happened yet, but I, we, we've seen some good chunks here and there from them, and it's it's cheap. Nobody cares anymore, so those are the kind of guys I like to scoop up. Yeah, um, You know, Traylon, we, we, we've already got an injury there, and we've got a couple of decent little shots at Traylon being all right. Um, so he gets an opportunity and takes a hold of it. He could be getting some snaps real quick and – um, look, he's a he's a, a good got good capital on him, and he he's a a real well built. Um, you know, when you see him, he's you want to put him off the bus first. He's a tantalizing kind of um, stature of a, of a human being. So he he's going so late in these drafts. He's down in the sixteenth, eighteenth round. Um, I've got him in the eighteenth a few times, and he's just sitting there. And nobody wants him anymore. So. Um, you know, we haven't even really seen a whole lot of Traylon, right? We've we've right. just seen a couple of chunks and then, you know, injuries and everything. And obviously they brought in Boyd and that was really kind of the last straw for a lot of people of like, oh, well, they hate him. Like, well, they don't know anything about Traylon Burks. They Boyd can run their offense, right? They they got to now they have a messenger in this offense. So, I, I, you know, Traylon's so cheap that I'm I'm interested. Evan yeah. Ingram, I am kind of just to double back on that real quick. Evan Ingram, I am sort of. You know, I think he's still going to have a good year, tight end premium. I think he's going to be just fine. He's going to catch a decent amount of balls. But yeah. really, you saw huge numbers at the end of the year when when Kirk was starting to miss and they were trying mm-hmm. to do some things. So, I, you know, I think Evan Ingram is appropriately priced. I'm 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 glad mm-hmm. that he didn't shoot way up there. Nine oh five is fine. And Dalton Schultz is still somebody I'm buying. He's still young enough. They signed him up for a few years. Yeah. Diggs might be gone. I think Dalton Schultz is probably still going to have some good weeks. Um, this year of just, you know, hey, we're just going to take some easy ones over the middle of the field. Schultz and, and um, CJ already had a little bit of a rapport. He can have some end zone stuff. So I think Schultz still has some good value in the you know 11th. That's almost, you know, get him in the 12th round premium. We're talking, you know, I don't I don't hate it. But um, yeah. yeah, I could I could see a scenario this year where Evan Ingram is the third tied in in this division mm. as far as points scored at the end of it right because mm. we Ooh, just that's talked spicy. about that's spicy right there, that's baby. really spicy right but, <laughs> but I'm, I'm looking at this and i'm like okay you know if they use chig differently than they than than the past regime um mm. and 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 crank it up if schultz is the the the, the blanket if you will for for a great offense and and the texans and evan ingram is going to regress a little bit and they brought in some more offensive line help um, which is also going to help the 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 wide receiver play. They brought in Gabe Davis. They paid him. They brought in Brian Thomas. They paid him. They're obviously, you know, and, and not that Evan's not going to get his, but at the same clip, like I, I, I could see, and, and it's a super hot ghost pepper take, but I could see a, a world where Chig Dalton finish um, in a tight end premium above Evan Ingram. So. Just get him in the comments. Get him in the comments. Yeah, just um, attack, <laughs> attack me, please. Um, yeah. You know, with the Chig thing, the old, my only, you know, is I don't, I don't think the system has ever really put up big tight end numbers with, with what they're running there. But, you know, we're in a completely different scenario. So things we're in a different change. scenario, but we're also I'm also just looking at it from a talent perspective. I mean, yeah. Hop, I, I love Nuke and I love Boyd. They're two two great great players, but they're also two. Uh, yeah, they're getting up there right, right now. Right? <laughs> yeah, they're, yeah, they're getting up there, and so just looking at where the targets and how they can scheme an offense. I mean, Chig is a separator, and if they if they use him right, and, and my talent valuation could be completely off on him, but. I, it's it's kind of like the thing with JSN, not to bring the Seahawks into it, but I've got to every podcast. Um, everybody's out on JSN, but everybody was in uh, uh, for him as a talent, right? And it's like Chig, you know, there was a there was a big wave there for him for a while. Mm-hmm. He was injured, and there was also just um, negative vibes. And I, I, you know, I hate to be all like West Coasty on you, man, but there were some negative vibes going on in that building. I think, and that's part of the reason why they cleaned house and and reshuffled. So yeah, it's a it's a big hot take, and don't 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 trade Evan Ingram for Chig or, or Dalton Schultz. That's not what I'm saying. I think I think you're still fine with with Ingram. I think his floor is great. I'm just talking about ceiling plays, and I I think. From a ceiling perspective, I think Chig has a, a, a the ability to way outperform that sixteen uh, FFD's uh, uh, sixteen round 
um, pick. And I, and I think Schultz is uh, the 11th round. I don't know what that is in our tight end rankings, but I can guarantee you if we, if we line up the points of what those tight ends are going to score and, and where he is in the tight end, you know, if he was tight in 12 last year or whatever, like I'm pretty sure he's outperforming that 11, 11 Oh eight where I mm. could see Evan not performing at that, uh, at that ninth round value as, as to what some other, like, you know, like, would I rather have Evan Ingram or Tajay Spears? I'd rather have Tajay Spears. Right. Mm. So, um, yeah. All right. Anyway. All right. Um, and then with the Dalton Schultz side, you know, that's assuming Diggs, Dank, Tank Dell, and Nico all stay healthy. One of those guys gets hurt and yeah. a big window opens for Schultz for, for a large, maybe a large chunk. Maybe it's three or four games. You know, well, knows? that's also assuming Mixon stays healthy because um, I don't know if I have a lot of faith in the running back room. Even though they've addressed it, I still don't know if I have a lot of faith in the Texans running back room. So, right. you know, they, they may have to do some some what you call running through the air plays, which I think is where Schultz comes into play as well. Mm-hmm. So, all right. How about some just to wrap this up, some some of uh, the later round guys and, you know, Nick Westbrook, Akine pops up to you in some deeper leagues because we just talked about it. There's yep. there, he's been there. Um, he's been decent and, you know, I, not that this is the same regime, obviously, but, um, I don't think he's been a terrible player when I've seen him out there. Mm-hmm. He looks like he could play. All right. So he, he's free. We yep. talked about Traylon. I like him a decent amount. You mentioned Parker Washington at one point, And I think yep. Mechie is somebody that should be on your radar as well. You know, they do. The Texans do have some depth at wide receiver. They have Bobby Woods, they have Mechie and they have Noah Brown. Um, so there is some good depth there at wide receiver. Um, yeah, I, don't I think mind having any of those guys, I, I don't either. Yeah, I think I think Brown and Mechie are definitely in the category of that best ball late round stab for me. You know, like um, from a dynasty perspective, mm-hmm. I'm probably not going out there and buying them. But from a from a stab perspective or getting them off the waiver wire or getting them for free as a trade in type of thing, I, I you know, I've on the on those larger, larger benches, I definitely am am all over that. And then Parker Washington, I, I it, this could just be a biased take because I have him on a <laughs> I have a marinade on a lot of my taxi squads. Uh, so, so it could just be a bias take, but I, I just, uh, again, going back to Gabe um, and if, uh, hopefully Brian Thomas works out great. Kirk, uh, Kirk cousins, Christian Kirk works out great. I just don't, I just don't know. And I think there's a window there where I, um, I could see Parker Washington getting into that wide receiver four, wide receiver three range with some additional development. He was a little raw coming out. So, so we'll see. I don't know. That's, yeah. But that's, that's somebody that, that I do. I always have my eye on. So more so than Devin. Duke no, I, I, I thought, I thought Washington played really well last year as a rookie when, and the yeah. couple of spots that he had to come in. So I, I think he's a, he's a for sure stash and hold and just, yeah. you know, let him sit there. If somebody drops him because they're the depth charter, scoop him up and, and grab a spot. I always loved Evan DuVernay. I thought he was going to be, yeah. Um, have a spot. So he's interesting he's a burner, but I think he's, you know, the, the, the new kickoff rules and, and whatnot. I think he, you know, that's going to be the opportunity for him. Um, and, and he usually makes a good special teams play once a year. Um, yeah. And then Anthony Gould is a, is a rookie. I believe that was an Oregon state um, pickup there. Small speedy guy. He, he was out there a little bit with them, but the, I don't think the Colts have a ton of depth there. So just, you know, when when you're trouncing around in the waiver waters after, you know, a little later in the season or a little later in the offseason here, yeah. gold could be an interesting pickup just from a depth perspective of and Downs is already down a little bit. So he's maybe getting a little extra run in that slot uh, here and there. But, um, you know, he's I think he's mostly going to be a special teamer, but uh, interesting guy there. So anybody else before we wrap up, Big D? No, I think I think you covered it all. I, th- um, I, I I did, you know, I do have an interest in Bigsby, but I I just same. If he can't hold on to the ball, if he can't do certain things that you have to do as a running back, he could go by the wayside pretty quickly. Um, so that there is some just general interest there. Um, but I don't know. And, and I, the hard part is in the the Texans room. It's just Damian Pierce. Who is he? What is he? Where where is he? Right. And and Ugh. I mean we we're we're big Pierce fans here. And so it's like I feel like he should be able to grab the bull by the horns, if you will, and 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 take at least control of that RB two um slot. But yeah. um and then Cam Akers, um, you know, if he can come back, um this is another year away from that so, pretty big injury, you know, that he could be a, a wild card play. Um and and Mixon has a history of some injuries, so so I do think there could be some 
potential points there between yeah. between Pierce and Acres. I just not sure personally who I who I would stab in that in that case. Yeah, so. I, I love the fit for Mixon for them, but has had some soft tissue stuff. Um, mm-hmm. But he, I think I don't think he missed anything last year. But they did give Pierce a little love in in coming into the last few last month, few weeks of of they they like where he's at, they like what he's doing, they like how he's changed things up and learned a lot. Wasn't super effective in the last preseason game, but it's preseason week one. Um, but he's probably the only one I'm really all that interested in owning. Just I, I do think we've seen some good play from him. Um, I think they just switched things up and and the the concepts of what they were running were different um, coming in with with Slowick, and he needed to learn that. And I don't know if he has or hasn't. And like you said, you'd, you'd hope he grabs his bull by the horn and it's a clear definition that he owns this two spot and then he would be valuable. But yeah. He's really free, so I'd, 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 I'll take a swing. And I like Bigsby backups for Indy Sermon and Hull. I got a decent amount of Hull. Sermon's been kind of passed around a little bit. We'll yeah. see where that goes. I thought Evan Hull had had some decent spots at the uh, in the preseason last year, but then uh, I believe it was an injury that took him out for a minute there. Um, so interesting backfield there. So let's wrap. Yeah, this I think up. I, I think the Colts could. Sorry, just last point. Okay. I think the Colts could definitely have a an ad. Um, mm. a camp ad, right? Like after yeah. cuts come out after the 90 man trims down. Um, I, I don't have a lot of faith in Trey Sermon. I think Evan Hole is a lock for that two spot, but I do think that there, there could be some talent picking there for, for the third, uh, third RB spot there in, in Indianapolis. Yeah. All right. Well, let's wrap it up. He's big D. I'm Casey. We're the FFD. We appreciate you joining us. We're going to be doing uh, all the trying to get as many different divisions as we can. And we're doing, you know, in-depth breakdowns of the teams a little bit more um, on the Patreon side of things. If you sign up for the Patreon, you get uh, at least three extra episodes a month. You get the Discord. uh, You get the ADP. We got rookie rankings. We got dynasty rankings. We got all sorts of stuff over there that you can check out. Um, You know, it's obviously our pleasure of course as our yeah definitely our um, pleasure, and yeah. we're going to be you know we got some good stuff i think i think we're um about to partner up with ffpc so we'll have some maybe try to uh, have a dynasty startup draft that you can join with us before the season starts if you want to get in one more you degenerates and we'll have a yeah. promo code if you want to grab some best ball spots so that'll all be coming soon we got some exciting stuff in the pipeline come check us out give us a five-star review uh sub if you have it on the on the youtube's comment below about how much you hated this episode and how stupid we are um or just give us some love be nice people um and if you didn't like it just shut the fuck up and move on <laughs> yeah hey <laughs> like, and if you're still listening we love you thank you for listening uh, to, to to us long ramble and and we're gonna get back at you here soon so yeah we'll catch you next time peace <laughs>